What is going on everyone? Thank you so much for checking out this video. So today we're going to go over how you can take professional food and product photos right at home. So if you're just starting out with food photography or product photography, creating a portfolio to show different companies what you can do is a great way to potentially land some paying jobs. So if you guys are ready to learn some tips, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, turn on those bell notifications, and now let's begin. So let's talk about the gear that you will need. So I live in an apartment, so space is very small in here, so I try to keep all my gear to a minimum. Now everything I'm going to mention, you do not need yourself. You can literally take these photos with your iPhone. So although the gear that I will be mentioning is on the higher end of pricing, I will be linking below some more affordable stuff. So the camera I will be using is the Canon R5, and the lens I will be using is the Canon 24-70. You want to make sure that your lens is either a mid zoom range or a macro lens as you do not want distortion. Of course you'll need some light stands. You'll want to use a tabletop or sawhorses. I'll be using my coffee table for it. So of course you're going to need some lighting. I will be using the Profoto B10 Pluses but you can use continuous lighting or you can even use a large window. With the light, I will be pairing it with a three foot Octabox. Of course, the bigger the softbox, the larger the light and the softer it will be. And of course, the subject for today, food. So I have some muffins, some fruit, some jalapenos, and a few other things. You'll wanna get some props, whether it's from the dollar store or a big chain store. These will really amp up your photos and it'll give it a better story. Pick up some foam core from your craft store, some white and some black. White will bounce some more light into the photo and black will take away some light from the photo. So this is optional, but I will be tethering my camera to my laptop so I can see the images on a larger screen. And last but not least, our food photography surfaces. Having surfaces like this scratchy cement surface will take your photos to the next level. I do have to give a huge thank you to Bub Market for sending me a few surfaces for this video. Bubmarket.com is an incredible website where you can get tons of different surfaces for your food, product, wedding, literally anything. They are 100% women owned and based in Cleveland, Ohio. They're also incredibly passionate for creating products for makers and creators like us. Their quality is surprisingly very good for their prices. These 24 by 36 surfaces are $50. Compared to competitors, that's very affordable. So if you want to give these surfaces a try and support a locally owned business, use my code NICK10 for 10% off your order. All right, so here's my first setup right now. As you can see, I barely have any room for all of this stuff, but it's still gonna work out. So I have my camera on a boom arm on a C-stand pointing straight down. Straight down is a very popular look in food photography right now. So that's what I, that is what I'm going for for this first shot. And now I have my three foot Octobox right here on the side. It's gonna mimic window lighting. And then there's a lots of tips and tricks that we can do to play with that light to give it a little bit more interest. But right now I just have it pretty low to the ground, the lowest on the stand. And the level of light is at like three and a half or so. And my settings on my camera right here are ISO 100, F2.8, which I might bring that up, but there's really only peppers on here right now. But if I want other things in focus, I will go up to F14 or even higher than that. And then I have it at 1 25th, which is the sync speed of the lights. And that's pretty much it. My color balance, I can correct it later on, but it is just set to daylight right now. So as I take photos throughout this time, they will be popping up on my computer right here, but I will pop them up on the screen. So I don't consider myself a food photographer, a food stylist, so bear with me when it comes to styling the food and stuff like that. But I just wanna show you guys how you're able to just set up just at the comfort of your home to get these photos, to get more in your portfolio, to reach out to other brands, to land some jobs and stuff like that. So I just wanna show you guys how I control the light and stuff like that. And I hope you guys really enjoyed this. So just sit back and relax. I'm just gonna work on some things here. I will pop in here and there to tell you guys what I'm doing and stuff like that. But for this first shot, I'm gonna keep it really simple, really dramatic. The surface I'm using right now is the chalkboard, which is really dramatic and dark. So I wanted something that really pops, which I couldn't find some red pepper. So I am using green jalapenos, but um, just to add some things to it, I'm gonna put some propping in there and stuff. So uh, yeah, let's get to it. So I went ahead and added a knife to this photo here. I think it just adds a little bit to the photo as I do have one of the jalapenos chopped up. So I don't know if that's the placement for it, but it's looking pretty decent as of now. So 
So I went ahead and raised the aperture on my camera to f14, which is getting a lot more in focus than f2.8 did. So I did have to raise the power on my light to eight. So I'm really liking where we're at right now with it, but the top left corner is a little bright for me. So I'm gonna use some black foam core and some other tricks to lighten that down. So using the black foam core in front of the light like that, knocked down a few highlights, but it also kept the highlights on the jalapeno and a little bit of that knife. So at the bottom of the image, it's looking a little dark. So I'm gonna add my white foam core and bounce some more light back into it. That's a little better as it did also give that last jalapeno a nice little highlight across it. So another little trick I did was I added a plant in front of the light. Now this is gonna give it a little bit more interest and it does help with the highlight in the top left corner. So now once we have that and the white card right here bouncing back light, we should get a pretty nice image. So there we have it. I think that photo turned out great. The surface looks beautiful in it. And the best part is that you just wipe it off and it's ready for the next shot. All right, so we're back with another setup. I am using the whitewash wood from bubmarket.com. Again, it is looking incredible with the surface and stuff. So I went ahead and set everything up. I got my lighting up, but I will walk it through with you guys. So let's see what I got going on here. So we are shooting blueberry muffins here. So I went from overhead to now a little bit lower of an angle here. And this is my setup I have. So the messier the look, the better. It, it's crazy, but you want it to look messy. It does actually look very nice like that. And I will pop up the image that is on my computer right now so you guys can take a look at it. But again, I just backed away my uh, three foot right here and I do have a fill card. So the shadows are a little bit less harsh. Everything in the back is out of focus, which I want because the main focus is the main one right here, which someone took a bite out of. And uh, yeah, so I'm pretty happy with it. I'm gonna do a little bit more tweaks here and there, but um, it looks pretty nice. Beautiful surface. This is uh, a really nice one. I love that wood look. So an important thing to keep in mind while you are styling your food is if you do want that messy look, you want to make sure you're not running into any tangents. So while I was setting this up and I dropped the blueberries, there are tangents of the blueberries in a straight line together. You don't want that. It will distract people. So if you want it really messy, all I did was just drop a lot of blueberries at once and they all scattered and then I fixed it from there. So I did back off the fill card just a little bit more, just so I can get those shadows just a little bit darker and deeper, just give a little bit more interest instead of it just being completely flat. So I think that is finished with this one. I'm super happy about it. I think it turned out great. Really nice texture from that surface and uh, I, I love it. It's a really nice setup. It's nice, light and airy, which is a little bit different from what we first started with, but um, I think it's a nice look for this kind of thing. And now let's go on to one last surface. So again, I am not a product photographer by any means, but I just wanna show you guys how you can just use one of these surfaces to really up your game in product photography. So all this is, it's super simple setup. Again, I'm using my strobe light, same settings as my last photo. I'm using a bounce card to fill in those shadows. And then I am using a black card right here to cut off a little bit of the light to give us a little bit of interest in that photo. I did switch to a 100 millimeter macro and I am using a watch for my subject. So the watch, make sure it's all cleaned off, make sure the, the arrows are pointed correctly so you are seeing a lot of the numbers and the brand that it is. And just make sure it looks really nice. You can always add more things to the photo, but again, I'm, I'm a very bad product photographer, so this is a super simple shot. This is just showcasing the really nice scratchy cement surface that I'm using for this and really highlighting that product. So as you guys can see, just having that one light setup can get you different variations of that product. So I got a nice top down, a little bit closer up, really close on the details, and it's all one light. Again, if you had a big window like this, you can use that. If you have a continuous light, you can use that. It's super simple to get started, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you guys want your own surfaces, make sure you guys check out bubmarket.com and use my code NICK10 for 10% off your order. Again, these things are incredible, high quality, 100% women owned, based in Cleveland, Ohio. I cannot say enough good things about them. I'm super excited to use them for my food photography and even weddings for the detail shots. I'm super excited. So 
if you guys want some, link below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video. Thank you.